Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety. Thank you so, so much for coming out tonight for the screen of The Fanatic. And at this time, please join me in welcoming the very talented artists who brought this film to life. Um, I want to start with an actress and singer you may have seen in Degrassi Next Class and the movie Full Out. Please welcome Anna Golia. Also joining us is an actor you've seen in the series, Nikita, as well as films like Final Destination and the SLC Punk movies. <laughs> Please welcome Devin Sawa. I almost called you Hunter. That's why I was like, wait a second. <laughs> oh, goodness. Can I have an autograph? Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Also, please welcome the film's writer and director. His previous films as a director Testing. include The Education of Charlie Banks and The Long Shot. Long Shots. Um, I understand he has a nice musical career to fall back on if this doesn't work out. Please welcome Fred Durst. Uh, finally, please join me in welcoming an actor who portrays the titular fanatic. Uh, he is a two-time Academy Award nominee, a Golden Globe and Emmy winner, a three-time SAG Award nominee. I literally do not have time to list even part of his filmography, but it of course includes little-known films like Grease, Pulp Fiction, Hairspray, my personal favorite, Face Off. Please welcome John Travolta. Oops. Thank you very much. How's it going? John Travolta. Wow, nice. Well, that's a wonderful welcome. Thank you very much. I have to admit, I'm a little sad the mullet is gone. I was, I was got so used to seeing you in it. Well, we just add a little later and we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually like? Was that a wig or was that your hair? No, that was that was a wig. Oh, How it happened was, uh, I called Fred and I said, "Okay, I'm in love with this character. I, I can't wait to play him. But what is he gonna look like? That's important to me because it's a visual medium. So we need to know what he looks like." So he said, "How do you feel about Hawaiian shirts?" Well, clearly, Fred <laughs> feels good about Hawaiian shirts. And uh, I was happy about that, and the shorts, and the kind of, you know, bad white sneakers. I said, I know, but the face and the hair, what's that going to be? He said, well, how do you feel about a mullet? Wow. I said, oh, I don't know about mullets. And he said, well, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of mullets. <laughs> so I said, really? He said, look up online. So I looked about 150 different wow. mullets, and bam, right there was the guy. With this, he was had these rimless glasses, and and this this haircut was perfect. He looked really good in it, but I just I, I superimposed it on my face, sent it to Fred, and Fred said, "We're on." Wow, that. it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever go out like in that hair and makeup just to like the grocery store? Or? No, but Hollywood Boulevard. That's probably yeah. <laughs> we we shot actually on Hollywood Boulevard with it. Yeah. Did people recognize you, or were they, were they like poor guy? Well, they knew we were filming. Oh, okay. you know, by this time, although in the in the Bobby Cop, I'm not so sure at first if they knew at all. I I, I think know. they knew we were filming, but. Once John came out, I don't think they recognized him at all. He was completely yes. transformed yeah. into Moose and unrecognizable, and just you really get lost in the character. And mm -hmm. yeah. that's yeah, that's yeah. probably good. You don't want TMZ being like he really let himself go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> working night job as a cop or something. Might might work to your advantage. The choice, Bobby Cop. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, this is an audience of SAG actors, by the yes. way. I forgot to mention that. Yes. I'm sure everyone's dues are up to date, um, but I always, <laughs> I always do like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? And actually, Fred, you're an actor too, so I'd love to hear your story. Let's go with Fred's story first. How did you get it, Fred? Wait a minute here. <laughs> do you remember? What? How did I what? get your SAG card? Oh, how did I get it? Um, I did. Gavin Pallone and Lily Zanuck asked me to do 
uh, play a character in a mini series they were doing called Revelations. And oh, that's wow. what I I was very scared. I've never I re didn't realize I was been acting the whole time with Limp Biscuit because um, I didn't realize I was acting until I got on <laughs> the movie set and I go, oh, this is just turn it on like that. And um, I was very fortunate to feel comfortable with those people. But that's how it happened. We were in Prague and I was stuck there for a month and freezing cold. But uh, it was amazing experience and it just gave me another perspective on how much incredible talent it takes for an actor to teleport you somewhere you know it's really i'm in awe of the talent so i have res mad respect for all of you here it's fred does love actors i can yeah. honestly yeah. tell you that yeah and what an amazing director fred is without him thank um, you because uh, when I arrived, and I do believe you arrive at a moment when you know that you can play this character, you portray him with confidence, but Fred always improvised with me prior to every scene. And he'd say, how you doing, Moose, you know? And then I would go into my, my stuff and- Moose was always there. Uh, always <laughs> there. Always. <laughs> and then encouraged me to talk to all the departments, lighting, props, hair, but you know, they were all into it. So it was one of those group things, I think, you know? But uh, Fred is, uh, utterly uh, a detailed guy and and really loves the, the the create part of building characters and telling stories in a f very freeing way and one of my f absolute favorite experiences of all time was working with fred on this film mm -hmm. yes so wow i mean that puts you up there with some of the greatest directors of all time if and you think about yes, it yes it yeah. does and as he should be I think, uh, I've said this before, but I do think great directors trust actors and they let them do their job. I remember years ago, 1980, Robert, uh, 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 Brian De Palma said, I said, well, would you like me to do it this way or this way or that way? And he said, well, I'm paying you a lot of money. <laughs> Why don't you tell me which way I should do it? He said, 90% I, I, of my job was over when I hired you. So, you know, please, you, you make the right choices. And it gave me my hat to wear. Mm. And every actor loves being trusted and their instincts being trusted. And, and if, you, if it's cast well, like you, you have done in this film brilliantly with the, my fellow actors here, you, you, you don't have to worry about them so much. You just trust their journey, I think. Don't you think, Fred? I agree. I think that, you know, fortunately you have a chance, hopefully most of the time, to to know who you're getting involved with and know what what they're bringing or or have a chance to interact with them or see their earlier performances or them as an actor and, and I do believe that's why you engage and you commit and you go on the journey together because you trust them mm -hmm. and you trust their ability and you want them to bring it you know I don't want to tell people what to do you know I don't I just want to empower people it with maximum love and and support to let them shine and do what they do the most. And so each actor here was very, just so special and they really brought their A game. It was a, it was a you know, not an easy movie to make. There was not a lot of money and John wanted to do this. He was very passionate about it. it didn't matter to him. He's like, let's make this movie. And I was very passionate and we needed, I needed actors who were gonna bring it you know, and and they brought it. And it wasn't about me, you know, contouring anything or doing any, anything like that. It was about, hey, I trust you. And this is when, by the way, when Moose showed up on set yeah. and the principal <laughs> photography, the camera test, um, I'd never seen Moose. I'd only seen the superimposed mullet. And, um, wow. And so we'd been talking forever, and sometimes I would be talking to Moose on my on the phone and text. We would Moose would contact me, and um, so I had this dialogue with Moose. But when he showed up on set, me and Conrad Hall were, you know, just waiting on John to show up at the right time, and boom, right on time, you just start hearing people laughing, and this great vibe and this loud voice, hey. Hey everybody. <laughs> and then it was Moose. He showed up as Moose wow. at the camera test and did not break character at all. And it literally floored 
the entire crew, it, the enthusiasm was through the roof and we all looked at each other and we said, we have a movie. Wow. And that is amazing. And so, yeah, I do agree that you have to trust the actors and what they're going to bring. And what actors to trust. I mean, Devin and Anna, man, oh, man. I mean, when, you know, it's, it, you may be satisfied when you cast correctly, but each actor has to feel that the other actor is, is exactly who they want to play with. Mm -hmm. And if it's offbeat, you, you can try your best, but if you try your best and you don't buy it, it always ends up somewhat mediocre. But with these two, I just, man, I, I, I don't think I could have been happier because they were so fantastic in their delivery of this. Yeah, it, it, was a great, it was a great set to be on. Okay. Did you actually get to meet John on set or was he always Moose? We had done another movie. The, the nice oh, thing about uh, my experience is I, I've, I've worked with John before. And the first time I worked with him, I worked with more of John the actor who showed up to set and you know did his lines and contributed and all that, but this time was the first time I worked with John, who showed up as this different guy every mm -hmm. day. Like he, he was, it was Moose, and, and he you know he spoke to everybody as Moose, and and it was um, I mean to work with John Travolta in that way is was I mean I'm, I have goosebumps right now yeah. just thinking oh, wow. I did that. Um, I, it was just it's, just, it's I'm speechless. And was, he gave me goosebumps as mo as Moose. Yeah. Because it was, oh, he couldn't just, it is, this is perfect. Moose is in love, you know. Wow. It was, there was there, but to, to their, both of their credit, there was a lot of names being thrown out and coming our way, and it was an interesting, you know, script. And, but John says, I want someone, I want you to know that there's someone out there I believe that would be really great as Hunter Dunbar. And so it was referred to me, and uh, Devin was graceful and willing to put himself on tape for me. We had not met. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't, I, I took a break from acting for a while, and so I hadn't done anything for, for quite a bit of time, so I guess Fred hadn't really seen yeah. Nikita, and uh, <laughs> so I, I just, I, the script was so good that I f had to fight my ass off to get, to get the role, and I just wanted to lay everything on tape and show him what I could bring to it, and, and uh, Oh, he brought it. What I was going to say was, he sent his tape in, and I knew immediately yeah. that this was the guy. And I was like, this is the guy. It's a miracle. John, you're right. So I call up Devin. <laughs> and yeah, I, and I play the, a prank on him, which I love to do. You know, I'm like, I do this long, drawn out conversation where I'm life. going, ah, it's not really, you know, I'm sorry. I just want to let you know, I really support you as an actor. I wish you the I best. I sat there for 10 minutes on the phone <laughs> listening to this guy going, listen, the tape was good, but, you know. <laughs> I, and it, went, yeah. it wasn't even like a minute. It was like 10 minutes of like, dude, just okay. I get it. You're going somewhere. You're going, uh, you're going, a, he was going like, a different right, I way. <laughs> I get it. No, but I dropped it. And he, he was like, it. yeah. Uh, yeah. And Wait, the same with Anna. There was, you know, there was all these different people coming through and, and these, these different actress, actors. And Anna was referred to me. And I said, well, let's see. We have to ha I have to choose by tomorrow. And I have someone else that I feel might be appropriate. <laughs> Anna throws herself on tape. Within like two hours, Literally by the way. <laughs> learned two pages of material and sent me the tape. And I hit the John up and I go, check this out. And we both watched it. And we were like, this is her. This is it. We're going with her. And she just killed it and crushed it. And so this was just meant to be. These guys really, really... We're the right people for this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, what was your audition like? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I am curious, though. I mean, in some ways, do you sort of miss auditioning? It's probably been a long time. Oh, you don't. No. Hell no. No, you no. definitely do you, not. You do not do miss not. auditioning. <laughs> Trust no. me. No. <laughs> I don't. I mean, when was the last time you had to read for something? Gosh. Welcome Carrie? Really? I think so. Wow. Which he beat me out for. Oh, so close. You probably weren't even born then. Come and on. It was mostly improvisation, which I was, thank God, good at, because Brian didn't really have that role written yet. So I said, no problem, Brian. You know, I, I'm, I'm fine. And I just made up Billy Nolan, and all the dialogue in the movie is basically improvised. Oh, my God. You know, yes, but I was comfortable with that. I was okay. Yeah. I mean, it's such a strange process. I don't, I don't know a better way to do it but I mean just we, because we have an audience of actors here is there anything you would recommend going into the audition room Fred is there anything you can say that directors are looking for 
Well, I can only speak for myself, and um, I've tried to do a lot of different positions as a filmmaker. I've tried to go in blind as an actor doing reads. I've worked as assistants. I've worked at all different parts to understand how to keep a set elevated and keep under, so I understand everything. But as far as the read goes, one, I actually, this might not be good to say, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> So I was casting this one movie one time, and I, a guy, Glenn Plummer, came in, and he's an amazing actor. I really love him. And he came in, and he goes, where's the lines? And I went, well, here they are right here, man. And he grabbed them, and he looked at them, and he sat down in a chair, and he was just going off the page and killed it, crushed it. It was so believable, so amazing and I go you are amazing he goes just let me know if I got the part and I gave him the part but to me it didn't matter if he was on page or off page what matters I've been he doing it, it all wrong <laughs> same <laughs> no it just mattered that that he, he it, it there's you just bring something and you see the person you see the character and you feel it and it just you just know and it and it doesn't didn't doesn't didn't phase me so I believe you just go in and be the person you're going to be, you just let it loose and be you. And if you flub, it doesn't matter. Stay, stay in character. Just keep going. I mean, that's what I think. I actually have slightly different viewpoint, but that's <laughs> but that's okay because that's Love what. To be on the page. No, the page. no, no. I, you learn lines. No, I like. <laughs> you I, if I'm casting something, I like the actor to know the lines, have confidence in their interpretation. I don't even care if it's the wrong interpretation. I just love a commitment mm. to that because a maybe doesn't work. I like decisions. I like a commitment, and then I can see what is possible and what can be altered or, or not. But I think when I looked at people that were uh, reading off the page and read, looking up, and they weren't, they haven't arrived yet, I was less impressed than the people that just it, it was as though they were on the set, action had happened, and they're performing for me. And then I get blown away because I thought, well, I don't, they're a pro, they know exactly what they're doing, this is awesome. So I, I think that that actor you're talking about was a, a kind of rarefied situation. I think that it's always better to go and prepare. Remember the, the screen test that you saw that I did for Welcome Back, Cotter? Mm -hmm. And you bragged about it. You'd send, send I was going to mention people. that earlier. If you haven't seen the screen test for Welcome Back, Cotter on I YouTube, I worked on that for a week. Incredible. Really? Yeah, I, 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 because I just, and then they wanted me to improvise, but because I knew this, the, the character in the script so well, I could think in it. I could think with it. And I had arrived. So I think that if you have the opportunity and you get the script in advance, work it and be brave with it, bold, whatever, because that, that's your create, and everybody's gonna have an opinion on yeah. how you create something, and that's not as important as your commitment to the create, I think, and it's more fun that way, yeah. I can assure you. I think it's, it's better too, fun. I do agree with John, you, you should be committed, you should know it. I was saying, I don't mean to not do that, that's why I said, I don't know if you're gonna like that I say that. What I think is, I knew he was the guy. Sometimes you just I know. just I knew he was yeah. the guy. I think, and I think the best thing to do is when you go in those rooms is you're, you're going in to a casting director or a director or, or whatnot, and you're showing, you've, you've read the material and you're, you've worked on the material, and you're basically saying, this is what I have to sell. And I'll take your notes and I'll adjust if I have to, but this is it. This is what I have to sell. Maybe you'll buy it, maybe you won't, but this is it. And that's, and that's and it. was the final choices. You wouldn't believe how odd they are <laughs> as far as, as, as the limit, you know, the, yeah. It goes down to five P. You, you, you see 20 screen tests. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those people could do it. They, could, they nailed it. And they're all good. I mean, really good. And then it boils down to personal favorites. Mm -hmm. We like you the know? tall guy. Y yeah. Or, Someone yeah. likes uh, this kind of person or that kind of person or uh, this kind of look or that kind of look. But they've all arrived at a performance level mm -hmm. that if they hired any one of them, they would not disappoint the production. So I think that there's a moment where you know you killed it and let it go. Yeah, yeah. totally. Huh? Let it go and you know, you're going to be chosen or not, but it's not going to be because you didn't arrive at something right. really good, you know, and you know it's good when you've yeah. done a good audition. Oh, yeah, you walk out of there with that, killed it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Although I will tell you a funny story. Yes, this please. Is, you'll like this. So when I was... <laughs> I was on. I was 1972, and it, Eric Estrada was in um, 
we were both auditioning for Bonanza. And I was 18, and he's about five or six years older than I am, but he was this you know, gorgeous Latin guy that was just strutting around. And he came, I'm, I've memorized my lines, I'm gonna give this cowboy performance and it's gonna be really good, I hope. And I'm hoping, and boom, this door opens out of the casting. And he goes, I really think I got the job. Like this, and I thought, that's it? Why even bother? Yeah. I, 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 why, why should I even go in and do this? It's over. This guy, whoever it is, this Latin beauty, just got the job. <laughs> so you can get mind fucked. And that's why I do that every time I leave a room. <laughs> Way to intimidate. <laughs> Wait. No tagging. <laughs> Wait, did he get it? No, none of us did. <laughs> it probably went to, you yeah. know, Jan Michael Vincent or something, you know. <laughs> you know, Anna, you were talking about how you had to put yourself on tape really quickly. In some ways, do you think that kind of helped not having a chance to overthink it? I actually think it did. Um, I'm also like, I'm a stickler for lines. I, I want to be prepared and I also want to respect the text and respect the project. So when I, when I got off my Skype call with Fred and realized that I had to go on tape, I was like, well, I have like a solid 20 minutes to learn these lines, drive home, get changed, come back and do a tape. But I think I think being in that kind of situation where I was just worrying about the lines themselves, once I got them down, it allowed me to then get into the room and just do my job mm -hmm. and just, again, arrive and do what I do. So I think it did end up working to my advantage, although yes, I did. never do that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it like when you found out you were gonna be you know, sharing scenes playing basically John Travolta's best friend, or Moose, as the case may be? Oh, it was... It was crazy <laughs> because obviously John's an icon. He's an, he's a legend. So for me to then, you know, star in a film alongside him, one of the greats, I, I kind of lost my mind. And so did my mom. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you guys ever feel kind of bad being mean to him? <laughs> I mean, especially you. You say yeah. some. Yeah. It was never You're, mean. You, uh, it's justified, I, I will say. Hunter's behavior yeah. like he catches him at the worst possible moments but still when you see when i saw him as moose i, I kind of put that away put john travolta yeah. away and just you know it became uh he and i as, 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 character. as, as yeah. characters but I'll, I'll never forget the first time I, I we met it was on the other movie and i knew he was coming down the hallway we were doing a table ream and i just was shaking i was like oh my god okay this is him I got to, I to see. And it was, you, were, you were moose i was moose i was i was moose i was good thing i didn't show up your house that night that's what happened but I, I, it was that it was a good thing we did a table reading because if i was that way on set like if we had a first, if it was our first day on, uh, on set i was i was really you know shaken so. Of course. But you know what, I, I think, no, no, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's fine. I think we're all a little moose. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, think, yeah. haven't we loved someone so deeply and blindly that we just hope that there, there's a reflection of that love back to us? Mm -hmm. and, we, and we put them on a pedestal. And it's almost as if you don't have the ability to do that. How can you expect someone to be your fan? if you don't know how to be a fan. Yeah. So I fell in love with Moose because of that part of him, not because of the misguided part of the confusion, but because of, of his earnestness toward love of the, of, 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 of the artist, you know? And that look when I first see you in the, in the shop is, it says everything to me. It says, oh man, I mean, everybody's felt that way about someone, mm -hmm. do you know? Mm -hmm. and, and if you haven't, I'd be curious why. <laughs> you looked right at Fred when you said that. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm shaking every time I'm with John. <laughs> I am. I'm curious. I mean, did you, in the writing, intend to make Moose so sympathetic? Because I mean, like, maybe I'm. I, I find him incredibly sympathetic. My heart breaks for him. It really does. Even I'm kind of rooting for him. Sorry, that, in some yeah, places. Yeah. No, totally. And I know that's in the performance, but I think it's also on the page. Oh, yeah. You know, that was the goal. The to put the audience or the viewer in an interesting juxtaposition of understanding the pureness of this person and relating to that and it being blatant and then watching him slowly walk with a butter knife mm. to a light socket, you know, and you just, you just don't want him to be making these mistakes and doing these things, but he, d 
he can't help himself and doesn't know any better, but you know his heart and you know it all the way through and it's all about heart. So the fun thing was to make you fall in love with the bad guy. And in this movie, Moose is the bad guy, but he's the good guy. He's a good bad guy. And the other side was the celebrity situation. I had a couple of things happen before I got in Limp Biscuit, and I've always been scared to meet some of the people I really admire and love and have emotionally have reacted to their art, just in case I don't have a weird experience. And I've met a lot of really talented people, celebrities. They're really good people, but they're not good celebrities. Mm -hmm. And this was that situation where this is a really good guy. He's a great father. He cares. He has a heart. He's doing what he's got to do. He's dealing with some drama and all these things in his life. But all he needed to do in that one moment was just, even if he drew a, a flying saucer on the guy's vest, he just signed the guy's autograph. You know, just he had to make a wow, this guy's really different and weird. And, you know, there's, there's a moment that you have to step back and take, I think, as a celebrity sometimes. And Hunter Dunbar just didn't take that. He had other things on his mind. And it's not his fault. And he's not obligated to do that. But I do think in this world, with how you make yourself available, there was no security at the bookstore. There's no things. You're just signing books, and it's on social media. And I think you're obligated to some extent if you're going to put yourself out there. And so it was a fun way to feel sympathetic for this incredible guy, Moose. But it was terrible what was happening to Hunter. I mean, this is absolutely unacceptable. But we still feel really bad for Moose at the end. Yeah. You know, it's it's a... I, I just love that I feeling. I love the the last moment when his eye is missing in his hand and, and he, he's paid the price, but then he gets recognized for authenticity. Yeah. It's, it's just, I think that's when, that's when I said, oh my God, I cannot yeah. believe the script. This is absolutely brilliant. And that the idea that Moose would even try to smile through it because he arrived, the Hollywood yeah. Boulevard, he arrived yeah. at the And he pinnacle. chose a bobby cop. Like, you know, he was a bobby cop, and now he has this incredible... Career you know, as a pirate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are, you know, we are living in a time more so than ever where I feel... I, I understand that it can be scary for celebrities, you know. There, there is a mass invasion of privacy going on in so many ways. It's, it's, a, it's a fraught occupation. I mean, did you sort of take that into consideration? I mean, I, I, have, you, have you met mooses? Well, I think if you're famous, you, you meet a lot of mooses. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, I think we're, we're all a little bit of moose. But when it goes over the line, it, it is what it is. But I think you can navigate through that, you yeah. know, um, well enough. I mean, I, I don't go, if I'm not in the frame of mind to, to go out and uh, be interrupted or be, uh, you know, tax to some degree, I won't go out. So I think it's my job to estimate when the proper time to do it is. If I'm in public, I just accept that's the, that's the way it should go. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe I'm different that way because I started out as a moose, you know, lo loving yeah. it. So I just became, <clears throat> you know, in life we become each other and actors are better at it than anyone. You know, what is it like to be you? What is it like to be me? And I think I could see both sides of, of, of the, in this mm -hmm. film, it made me understand uh, better. Um, so I, I just think you have to navigate and des design it your own uh, particular way. Do you know? Was there ever talk about maybe playing Hunter? I mean, it seems like a fun twist to make. I, uh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and you could be Moose. <laughs> You'd be Moose. He can tie you up. <laughs> I, I, I just was so in love with Moose, I just couldn't imagine playing anyone but Moose, yeah. but, but you know, I always had Devin in my fantasy for, for, for this, because to me, he was like watching Steve McQueen. I mean, it was just awesome. It, I can't even imagine another actor doing that, because he kind of, uh, uh, Devin kind of is a, a, a microcosm of, an, uh, of a bunch of movie stars that it just is kind of perfect for the scenario. He's mm -hmm. all of those guys together in one. And I think Moose felt that way about him, too. Uh, yes, it's hard not to look at you that like that right now. 
like <laughs> like the moose look. Um, I'm picturing you like bathed in the light, like in the bookstore. Um, you mentioned, you know, you're shooting on Hollywood Boulevard. I, I know this is an independent film. I, I don't know what your budget was, but... Low. Yeah. <laughs> Low. Fifty dollars. <laughs> And some in and out. <laughs> but uh, however, there's a freedom to that, and I mean it. Yes. We struggled, we got it done somehow. But you know, you you couldn't even imagine trying to bring this to a big studio. They'd say, "What? You, he can't. He can't take out his eye. He can't blow. He, he can't crawl into bed. He, he, he can't do these things." And they would just make it nothing. Mm -hmm. You see, so the idea that we had a limited budget, but we could do whatever the fuck we wanted was such a liberating thing. I agree. Wasn't it? <laughs> and for John Travolta to want to do that is a pretty amazing. Well, but, but that's, I've always felt that way. You know, I've always been attracted to freedom in the arts, yeah. you know? But nobody executes it better than you do because Fred allows those kinds of freedoms. No idea was out of bounds for Fred. <gasps> and I love that shit. Yeah. You know? He really does. I mean... John Travolta's had an Im impact on all of us. Yeah. It, it's undeniable. There's not anyone I can ever meet that would say different. And uh, he really is a, is a, he is a real actor. He cares so much, so much. And he has amazing ideas and instincts. And we would sit before every scene and talk about it and talk about the dialogue. and. He's just so enthralled with the process that it's just you fall in love with a true artist. And by the time you're in front of the camera, you're just, it's just working and going. And you're going, oh my God, did we get that? You know, and um, luckily there's no check the gates these days because, <laughs> you know, everything's power and fire. So, but when you're very limited and you have to move quick, you don't have a lot of time at all. And luckily with talent, like up here on the stage, we were able to move fast, and they brought it quick, and it was amazing. Well, you were, at the, you were at the helm, and you allowed all that, and you encouraged it, and had great ideas. Oh my God, Fred has just so it's like all the and I and I, and I mean this. I've worked had the the privilege to work with the best, from Robert Altman, you know, to Mike Nichols and and Quentin Tarantino and all that. But Fred has that thing that they all have which is gentle suggestions that might carry th a through line through the whole scenario. And when you hear it, you know it's come from a genius perspective and you, you grab it, you own it, and then you use it. And it's very rarefied, so rarefied that you can name the people in film history that have that gift and, and you have it. Wow. Because it's never something you're forced to do, it's just a gentle suggestion of so some sort. Or what do you think about this? And then you're, you're, you're outside your head on it. You're kind of really creating together uh, something that is going to be certain to be effective, even if it was only for us, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, it, but it works. And on top of that, just the energy that he brought to set, he really lifted up the entire cast and crew, and he made it such a comfortable environment to be able to play and feel comfortable and be encouraged and inspired. Like, he really created With the perfect zero working. Sleep. With zero sleep. <laughs> With zero sleep. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. How'd you sleep Low last budget. night? Well, I didn't get to sleep last night, but, you know, it was yeah. amazing. Oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, can you tell us tell us um, what your most challenging day was on set? It might have just been a specific, specific scene. I mean, you spent a lot of time tied up. <laughs> um, but even, like, just something like having to shoot so many scenes in one day. I don't know. I know it was a very short shooting schedule. That energy level you had to rise to every day on that bed yeah. uh, astonished me. Yeah. Because he was at a 10 the whole time, mm -hmm. because wouldn't you be? <laughs> if you see a, a Freddy coming at you oh, inside, I mean, over and over. I mean, it was uh, amazing. I've never really seen anything like that. Oh, it, was, it was amazing to watch. There's a lot of stuff that didn't, didn't, that made it, that didn't make it to the film that was just like phenomenal. Like, the LL Cool J, I guess we couldn't get copyrights to that, but Moose actually raps LL no. Cool J. And it, I and, need love. And it's, it is the, it, it, oh man. So wait, it's, it can't be on the DVD extras or anything? Well, well yeah, we had a John has to tell you this story, so he busted, we're on set. This and is, and he the, says, it's the most amazing thing ever. 
He goes, give me a shot. So we have this shot set up, and we don't know what he's going to do. And, he's, and he performs I Need Love by LL Cool J <laughs> all the way through as Moose. And to, Wait, he's I'm got sorry. a story of why he knows I'm, it. <laughs> you know you have to do it now, right? <laughs> when I'm alone in my room. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I won't do it as Moose, but I'll do it as I remember. When I'm alone in my room. Sometimes I stare at the wall, and in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call, telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dove. For the first time in my life, I see I need love. There I was, giggling about the game that I had played with many hearts, and I ain't saying no names, playing make-believe, saying that I'm true, knowing in my heart I laugh as I say that I love you. Uh, you see? I love you, girl. You but see? Watch Moose do it, and that's a whole <laughs> and that And that trip. was going on all day long no. every day and so that's where I got the as I'm tired of the bet that's where the energy came from just just oh stuff like that and, and you know Fred can only put a certain amount into the movie but there was I mean stuff we like that we did a was, bunch of homages to all sorts of horror films and thrillers I turned into uh, uh, Pennywise uh, uh, yes, Misery Pennywise, Pennywise. <laughs> so he jumps on top of me he's on top he's doing he's doing like I can't, I can't remember where your lines were he was straight Pennywising like it was oh, it, was, it was awesome it was it would be great for the DVD special to just add a bunch of outtakes right? uh, outtakes because yeah. we yeah. did about 10 different movies that I was I'm desperately trying to impress him that I know horror films and I'm good at them yeah <laughs> You know? And he started doing the whole misery bit and slugging Devin's feet with his backpack. No. I mean, <laughs> but in, in Moose's way of interpreting it. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, was, we were like, damn, this awesome. is amazing. And he would say, Fred, is, are we ready? And then he goes, I got something I want to try. And you just go, okay, we're set, we're ready. And he comes on, and you don't know it's Pennywise the Clown or whatever. Wow. Did and I'm do- tied up. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what's he going to do now? <laughs> Did you do the Pennywise laugh or just the... Yeah, just- was a, there was a laugh for sure. <laughs> He jumped right on top of Devin. He got in, it was a, it was a it was a it was a shot right here. It was both of our faces. and He got like this close. It was and he, really scary. It was right? Actually, the scariest moment that Moose had. What was the the, the, the verb that you always did that? I don't. Jimmy know. would know. Jimmy and Marie would know. Remember Jimmy? Oh, I didn't see him. Anna, was this going? Is was it a uh, want a balloon or something? He goes, oh, <laughs> some. Oh, he had one bit which I love too. He goes, right? You see in the movie where he goes, "You think I know what you think? You think I'm a stalker, psycho killer, cascade?" <laughs> <laughs> we cut that too. That they was, wouldn't let us use it. That's right. Yeah, you're not allowed to use it. There, no talking heads line. But we all had fun. He goes, "Psycho yeah. killer, cascade." <laughs> hey, no, fum, 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 fum. Uh, Conrad Hall, he just, he lost it with that. Because it. it. it's the last thing the cinematographer thought that he would be watching. Right. A psycho killer, if you say, you know, it, it, he, he just, he must have been something meant to him. Something there to was him. a moment when he said, what was the hardest time? Uh, John Moose was laying on the ground and we had to do the squib pop where his eye gets popped out. And so he's got this incredible... A special effects guy this beautiful eye and this blood's coming so his his assistant is going to pump the blood so we're we're shooting pointing down looking at moose on the ground and we go okay hand out of the way boom and we do the squib and we count it down and it pops and you know moose has this terrible cry it really breaks your heart and you're watching him cry but the guy got carried away watching him as he's pumping the blood <laughs> and he kept pumping the blood and choked <laughs> Started choking on the blood and still trying to keep that incredibly creepy scream. He thought we were still going. He said, and, all, and, and I said, why? You know, after I coughed up all this fake blood, I said, why, did you, why did, didn't you stop? He said, I just got so fascinated with that coming out of your eyeball. Wow. It's on tape. That has it's to go the, in the outtake. It's the yeah. most mad I've ever been on the set. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> I'm talking a gallon of blood covering up. His, it wasn't stopped. And I said, people don't bleed like that. <laughs> 
I feel like Anna, you, you missed all the fun on these. Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, no. On my days fun. off, okay. I was not in my hotel room or exploring Alabama. I was on set watching it all. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You Again, it was such a great time. environment to be to be in. So I just spent my days there watching them play and watching all this go down. And it was the most entertaining thing. That's amazing. Yeah. It was really the most creative and the most fun I've ever had on a movie. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Sure. With a gun to our head. <laughs> because of Literally the time or limit. Figuratively, I mean. Figuratively. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 17 just, days in a wow. movie star. Let's go make a movie. Wow. Gorilla. Um, I do want to say. It can be done, though. Yeah. <laughs> hope. There's hope. <laughs> I do want to take some questions from the audience. Um, I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anyone's name. Um, actually, we just covered that. Uh, oh, a question from Precious. Where are you? Hello. Uh, wants to know, oh, what kind of role or project would you like to take on that you haven't yet? What's on your bucket list? It's for you, but I'd love for everyone to answer. Well, uh, to answer that question, it's very specifically a little novella I wrote back in 1992. I published it in 97. It's called Propeller One-Way Night Coach. It's about a little boy who travels across the United States when there was the, the least expensive ticket you could buy was at night, propeller aircraft in coach. And it made milk run stops. It stopped, you know, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Chicago. It, and, and it's all the people he meets across the country. And he's with his mother who is a, uh, you know, wants a mother who wants to be in movies. And uh, she's quite... a sexy and, and, uh, and imagines herself as a Marilyn Monroe. It takes place in 1962 and it's all the people that the mom meets and the boy meets and it, it's, an, it's, a, it's an ascension. It's a little book, it's only 60 pages, but I'm, I want to make a movie out of it and I want to direct it and, that's, that's, and I'd love to use my little boy in it, my son. <laughs> Well, I was thinking of your wife, actually, when you talked She'd about the mother. She'd be perfect. She's yes. an amazing actress. Yes, she is. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my answer. Yeah. Fred? <laughs> um, actually, it makes me think of something that has been on my mind since we talked about it. There's, I, I would like to do a movie about Marlon Brando. He takes a short little trip with a friend. And... John, believe it or not, is the most incredible Marlon Brando. Oh, yeah. Like, he kills you, it. You know, Fred, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 because you're so enthusiastic about my playing uh, myself, I, I, I'll do it. No, it's only it because floors I, me. I told Fred lots of stories about my five years with Marlon Brando, and I had the good fortune of being his favorite actor. And that being said, we just got along beautifully. And I, I had a lot of wonderful, touching stories, and Fred was so taken by them that he thought it would be an interesting uh, movie to, to do uh, this kind of thing, all about uh, the love of him, not about anything else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, the story is so incredible, and he, I just have this, this fantasy about making it and I, I think that's on my bucket list I don't know if I really had a bucket list except for just be passionate about the things that I want to do and and look forward to doing and I have lots of original scripts and things I'm interested in and want to want to do but this one has been ringing in my head for a while this this thing and it's yeah. really too, amazing. Yeah. yeah and he also <laughs> put him on the spot which I I don't know if he minds but he every time on the set He'd go. He'd come up to me and do this Muhammad Ali <laughs> thing that always got me jazzed up. And you got to do it here, man. Which please. One was it? He just says, the, he goes, he goes, oh, yeah, they can't it. believe. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He said, who, you know, if, if, if someone, if we was walking down the street and, and, and people saw me or you, who would they recognize first? I'd say, I don't know, Ali. You know, he said, let's do it. So he would, We'd walk down the street, and he would love to see who got a bigger action. Of course, the people would react to both of us, and he would laugh so hard about about the effect that we could make at the time. Oh. You know, when was this? Uh, you got to like say you can't believe they're right. They can't oh. believe it. Oh yeah, and he'd say, um, uh, it w "Let's say you were the person that recognized us," and he would say, 
You can't believe it. You see on John Travolta and Muhammad Ali. <laughs> and you're going to go home and say, I'm dreaming. <laughs> I, I, I had a dream that I saw them. <laughs> he did that nonstop on the set, by the way. <laughs> they can't believe their eyes. Fred Durst and, and John Travolta on the set. <laughs> Devin, of course, that's your idol, isn't it? Uh, one of them. One one of them. Sure, yeah. Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali. Wow. Is there anything you're dying to play? You know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, I had a great year last year. Um, I, mob stuff. I like, I like uh, action stuff. Man, I'm, I'm just... I'm, whatever interests me, you know. But I, I feel like I'm doing it right now. Yeah. I'm when very, you get out of jail for what you supposedly did to the maid and and oh, Moose. No. <laughs> that is part two. Moose part two, where I hunt him. Yeah. <laughs> moose on the loose. Yeah. Moose. On <laughs> the Still <laughs> moose. That's right. I want payback. <laughs> I think there's a sequel there. Yeah. Moose is actually a big star now. Someone discovered him as Playing the pirate. pirates, yeah. <laughs> I'm his personal assistant. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and what about for you? Um, for me, it's just telling stories that will affect people and stories that I'm passionate about and characters that I can really transform myself into and get gritty and, you know, not, not worry about having to be, to be pretty mm. in a part. Um, so, yeah. I'm, I'm not married to a certain project or genre. Uh, we have a question from Mark Sean. Hello. Uh, wants to know, oh, during the time it was hard for you to get work in acting in Hollywood, what did you do and how did it affect your life? I think this is, this is for me. Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, I always believed that rubbing elbows with all sorts of people fed you as an actor. And I never got worried about not working and instead what I did was I lived life fully and and really experienced people I never uh, lived in a kind of ivory tower so people were shocked about it. I never had a security guard and never did any of that and I just get into conversations people watch travel around the world and um, experience other human beings experiences uh, watched history go by and all that believe it or not every act I think every single actor has a library of references that they they've collected over the years that they pull out and boom you know they've got something that no one's ever seen before or something different from the next guy that's where you collect it on your time off if you're so busy working every minute of the day all the time where's life you know you got to take some time to absorb life and 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 you know uh, relive it when you get to work you know uh, Devin, you mentioned you took a break from acting. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you know you would return at that time, or did you? No, think I, I had no intention of returning. I had oh. I, done it uh, like John from a very early age. I think I started at eight years old, and I went pretty hard for a lot of years. And when I was about 24, 25, I was doing things that I didn't want to be doing, movies that I didn't want to be doing. They'd be, you know, I didn't like the scripts. I didn't like whatever it was, and uh, I was burnt out. And um, so I went home to Vancouver, Canada, and uh, I switched gears and did that for a while. And uh, somebody at my agency at the time didn't get the memo and sent me a script, snail mail. And uh, I auditioned for some Mark Wahlberg thing, and that was it. I was back in it. But the thing was, I, I started slow, and I tried it out, and I found the love for it again. Mm -hmm. And I started doing it not for anybody but myself. And, uh, you know, I got on a TV show and then I started doing these movies and, and I've been happy since I've come back. So, you know. Well, we're happy you're back. Yeah, I'm happy to be back. Thank you. But why are you so mean to me? I don't know. <laughs> it, was very, it was very easy to be mean to Moose for some reason because Fred would only talk to you. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, you know. Well, I needed more love. I know. <laughs> I know. You had a lot of love. Maybe too much love. <laughs> they would leave me Maybe tied up and go to lunch. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, we have a question from Jeff. Could be. Oh, Jeff, over there. Hi. Um, for John, wants to know how is entering the business these days different from when you began? Oh, that's such a good question. <laughs> oh, how do I start? Um, okay. Firstly, there were less of us, and I mean that literally. 
I mean, if I named, <laughs> I could name you five people that were at every audition, and one of us was going to get it. Eric Estrada. Well, yes, <laughs> but Eric was, no, that was earlier. That was before I was famous. Let's say, okay, at, at, in New York or in L.A., it was uh, Richard Gere, Treat Williams, myself, and maybe two other people that I didn't know. That, that was it. Like, there was no competition. Now, there's more opportunity because it's divided in 100,000 ways, so there's more opportunity for work. But there's more people for the, that work as well. But we had it a whole lot easier as far as our or odds at you know making a living in all that do you know in theater and in film you know so uh that's the main difference i see uh, do you guys see i mean how does it compare i mean is that shocking to you no not at all even when i when i first started it seemed like a lot le a lot less people like now it's it's there's thousands of people coming to, to los angeles every year just to you know get in the game so it's a whole different business yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like no matter what audition, whether it's in Toronto, which is what I call home, or LA, every room I'm in, it's like a whole new group of actors. I'm like, whoa, yeah. there's so many actors. And the okay. good news is there's a lot of work for actors, and it's all you know compartmentalized. But there's more work, but there are more actors. Yeah. You know, and the audience. But don't forget, there was three networks then. Yeah. There and uh, each show had upwards of 40 million viewers a week. You know, now a big hit is a million people a week, mm -hmm. you know, but there's 40 shows, not three. Yeah, I mean, uh, 40 channels, not three channels. So it's all balanced out differently. Um, so that, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's one of the aspects I find uh, tremendously different. And film, you know, they're doing more uh, Marvel comic type films and, and they're, and actors are having to do a lot of those where they would normally do movies like this, you know, and, and it's rarefied that you get to do real great movies that you feel strongly about their storytelling and the characters. So that's getting a little more, uh, although I think it's turning around. I think there's a, there's a, a, a kind of jargonaut back into the actor's direction again, where I think we're all going to find more work that we like and not so much... Um, stuff that you know you just show up and be cute in or something you know how have you not done a superhero film yet I'm trying to figure that out because honestly I'm just I'm not it's not my thing yeah. you know it's, it's just that it's <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I, I feel you know it's very hard you go to, to the movies with your children and they're wa you're watching and you're going, oh, please, I don't want to see this actor. It's so good. Why are they doing that role? And you're dying inside. And the kids are looking at you like, isn't this the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life? You know? And I go, yeah, it, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> and it, it's hard. You know, it's hard. And, um, you know, you have to have some sort of vision for what you want as an artist. In a, in a totality and sometimes you don't have choice and you have to work and pay the rent and do all that but there are many ways of, of doing that as well i mean honestly i think of phenomenon and michael as kind of superheroes yeah yeah in, they're, they're ahead sure of their they're time. heroes yeah. absolutely yeah and i'm and moose is my personal hero <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I saw um, Apocalypse Now last night on the big screen, and that's the best movie I've seen on the big screen in a long time. You it's just you, you're just watching. It's wow, they don't make them like this anymore. Mm -hmm. they, it's 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 not not only is it big and, and extravagant, but it's also performance driven, and it's it's just. Well, you, you know. hear this rumor that things are cyclical, and you know I hate it because I don't want to think that we depend on cycles in order to create futures, but it seems that you know maybe there is something to it and to some degree because I, I feel the effort going toward back to, to good storytelling and making good films and 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 more of the actors role in that yeah. and not just showing up to fill a, a void of some sort you know uh to that end i want to remind everyone this movie hits theaters on august 30th um please spread the word it is a summer movie so um let everyone know i want to there's a hashtag there the Fanatic movie, um, get on your socials, let everyone know. I want to thank you guys actually for being a great audience and thank you guys so much thank for being so here. Much. Thank you everybody thank you. for yeah. taking the time.